All right, for Sculptors Pro, let's go ahead and take this undo slider and slide all the way back. Let's turn on our polyframe here, shift F. We'll slide this back to where we had our original object here. Let's turn polyframe off. So you can kind of see, here's our original head shape here. If we turn polyframe on, you can see we have the really stretched vertices here, or the stretched triangles or faces, and then the polarized cap and all of that. Now, because we have the insert mesh body part selected, you're going to see, uh, here's the Sculptures Pro button right here. You can see you can activate it by hitting the backslash key on your keyboard. Uh, right now it's grayed out because you can't use it with insert mesh brushes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my standard brush. So B, S, T. And now you're going to see I can have the standard brush and I can have Sculptures Pro turned on. So now I can turn that on. It's going to turn yellow. And now when I use the standard brush, number one, you're going to see the cursor is now purple. If I turn the standard brush or the Sculptors Pro mode off, it turns back to red. This is normal sculpting. If I go back to Sculptors Pro, it's now purple. And if I hold down shift, it's orange. If I turn Sculptors Pro off and I hold down shift, it's blue. So blue is normal smoothing with Sculptors Pro on. Shift is orange. And it's actually going to subdivide our mesh as we smooth. And if we go back here to like our snake hook, so let's grab our snake hook, up, snake hook brush BSK, or BSH, sorry. So if you remember, let's do this. Let's turn Sculptors Pro mode off. Turn off polyframe here. And as we drag this out, you're going to see as the farther we drag out, the more and more stretched those polygons are going to get, right? Turn on polyframe, you can see that even clearer. If you turn Sculptors Pro mode on and you pull out, you're going to see your object is tessellating dynamically. This is dynamic tessellation. So now we're able to pull out from our mesh from anywhere and it's going to dynamically tessellate as we sculpt and if we grab say the standard brush or the clay brush as we're sculpting on our object the surface underneath is going to tessellate as we sculpt if we make our brush size smaller if you remember is s tap s and make our brush size small and we start sculpting it's going to get even more detailed so even in undetailed areas we turn polyframe off we can put little warts if we want to and they're highly detailed because our brush size is dictating how detailed our mesh is. So the smaller brush we make, the more detailed the geometry is going to be. The larger brush we make, the less detailed it's going to be. And you can always turn on polyframe to see the difference. So here's very detailed, and then make our brush size big and not detailed. If we make very detailed things, and then hold down shift to smooth, you're going to see it's going to, if our brush size stays small, it's going to be nice and tessellated. If we turn on polyframe here, you're going to see we're tessellating by smoothing this area. If we make our brush size very big and then hold down shift to smooth, you're going to see it's going to tessellate with lots uh, bigger geometry here. In fact, if you hold down shift and smooth, you can smooth out the nothings. So you can actually separate these pieces. And you can just get rid of them completely if you want to. Now you can use this without DynaMesh. You can use it in conjunction to DynaMesh. But one of the cool things about this is, for example, what we were doing earlier, if we take our move brush and then we put these close together, and temporarily, I can hold down control. I'm going to mask the end of this nose. And I'm just going to push this chin right up into that nose. And then control drag in my documents to unmask here. Now, if I go through here and I hold down shift and smooth, you're going to see those things don't stick together. If I dynamesh them, so geometry and turn on dynamesh, it's going to stick them together. And then when I go down here to shift to smooth, it'll be stuck together. Now, I can unstick them if I go through here and I shift smooth that out with Sculptors Pro turned on. But if I have DynaMesh off and I don't DynaMesh these things together, they're still going to stay separate. Even though they look like they're together, I can go through here and you can see I can smooth them back out to two separate pieces. Or, and again, I'm skipping ahead because we haven't gotten the masking yet, or Gizmo. If I hit W, we'll go into Gizmo mode. Hold down Control and just drag on your object. And that'll just unmask this little nose section here. Hit Q to go back into Draw mode. Go back into your Move brush. And then you can move this piece out. And you can see there's still two separate meshes. So I'm sorry I skipped ahead. You can ignore that if you want to. I just wanted to show you the difference between Sculptures Pro, which is adding detail where you need it. So you can go through here and you can kind of sculpt in again with your clay brush. And if you want to, you can actually, with your brush size, you can make very, very detailed geometry right off the bat. Now, I would say this isn't the best way to approach an organic object. I would consider you know, getting your forms in first before jumping in and adding a bunch of detail before you get the rest of your object figured out. Just like when you're, you know, doing a sketch, you know, you probably don't want to go through here and make crazy detailed eyes and then have the rest of your face look like this, right? But it is useful and it's a way to add geometry where you need it. 
And this is all I'm going to touch on with Sculptors Pro for now. If you want to know, go in-depth in the Sculptors Pro, you can always go to my YouTube channel, my QBrush page, or my Gumroad page, and you can download ZBrush 2018 What's New playlists. For example, if we click on this, you're going to see we go way more in detail on Sculptors Pro functionality. We'll touch on it in future videos, but I want to let you know there are other resources available for you for that. Now, just a couple caveats because you're probably going to run into them. Uh, Sculptors Pro is a little bit picky about what brushes it's able to use. If I switch to my Move Brush, you're going to see Sculptors Pro is grayed out. So Move Brush, it doesn't work with. In fact, if we go to our standard brush, you're going to see our Sculptors Pro works fine. However, if we go down here to our brush menu, you can just have your divider, double click your divider to open it. Brush menu, small dot, drag it over. Go down to where it says auto masking. And say, for example, you turn on back face masking, which we'll talk about in a bit. As soon as you turn that on, you're going to see Sculptors Pro is grayed out as of this recording. So we're no longer able to use Sculptors Pro sculpting if we have any auto masking features turned on. So if we turn that off, now it's active to us, and we can go ahead and use it.